Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look at Penguins 1800 to 2000. Now these were published in 1962 and 1963 and they feature a whole manner of penguin house artists and house designers and they are absolutely fantastic. I'm sure you're going to enjoy looking through them. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so we start off with 1801, which is this crime title. Bit of a worn old copy, this one, but I'm not complaining. The Crimson in the Purple, Holly Roth. And uh, as we'll notice with a lot of these now, um, they have got um, uh, either photo or illustrated covers. And just so we can pop this one into date perspective, as it were, we are looking at books in the, well, published 1962 in Penguin. Um, and we'll probably be looking at books 62 to 63 in this series from 1801 up to number 2000. So once again, a bit of a tatty of 1802. It's uh, Miss Reed's Thrush Green. And um, I believe this was the very, very first of the famous Thrush Green novels of which there were many in the end, weren't there? Um, never read a, a Miss Reed, not really my sort of thing, but um, originally published in Penguin. A much nicer copy now of uh, 1803. This is uh, Margaret Irwin, that great Lucifer. And this is a uh, portrait of Sir Walter Raleigh. It's like a biography title. This one's got some uh, illustrations in as well. So not published as a Pelican. They decided to release this as a main series. Really nice tight copy, that one. It's lovely. This is very early science fiction uh, from James Blish, at least, a case of conscience. Nice copy of this one as well. I'm a fan of uh, Penguin science fiction, as you know, if you've been watching this channel, and this is a particularly good one. Of course, around this time, he had um, uh, the Penguin science fiction omnibus, which he was, uh, there we are, which he was actually editing the first volume of three Penguin science fiction books that he did. 1811, The Good Boy, Ian Cross, Let's get one of those artwork covers, and I believe, let's have a look. Yeah, cover illustration by Brian Keogh. Quite a distinctive style. Very much the covers are starting to reflect the time that these were published. Another big penguin author, Monica Dickens, Man Overboard. Adrian Bailey was the uh, cover artist on this one. And Penguin had a few sort of house artists at the time, upcoming uh, designers and things like that. Uh, the first of the uh, PG Woodhouses, big fan of uh, PG Woodhouse, not a massive fan of these 60s, late 50s and 60s covers. They're not my favorite. Um, I really, really do love Woodhouse in general though. I find him effortless to read. Um, yeah, Jeffrey Salter, and he did pretty much all the Woodhouses in this sort of cartoony style, which I just don't think of age very well on the uh, Wood Woodhouses. One of my favorite authors, C.S. Forrester, um, most famous of course for the African Queen and the Hornblower books, but he did lots of other things as well, and Penguin published pretty much all of them at one time or another. Yeah, Robin Jakes did the uh, the cover for this. He also did the little black and white illustrations for the Hornblower books around this time as well. Yeah, great, great author. The Shorn Lamb, John Stroud. This is a nice copy, isn't it? This is one I got fairly recently. Brian Keogh again, so we've seen that, that same artist being used a few times now. Silk hats and no breakfast. Notes on a Spanish journey on a Tracy. And this looks like travel writing to me. Same artist, Brian Keogh. And a lot of these books weren't actually purchased sort of from penguin dealers per se. These are just these later ones, the ones that I just picked up out in the wild in all my sort of years of collecting penguins. Um, this is a B format one, so it's, it's the slightly larger format which Penguin had started doing uh, around this sort of time. So if you compare it to the original, that's what they call an, an A format book. 
and then this larger one here is, is B format. It's got like a another centimeter in width and height. Um, and this is one of the sort of the fabled penguin cartoon books. And this was looking at the artist Max. And they did quite a few of these, and I really like them. Um, I must have at least a dozen. Whether that's all of them, I've never really checked, but um, I certainly do like them. My favourite of those is the Penguin Heath Robinson. That's a great little uh, penguin one. Um, Stephen Potter, Theory and Practice of Gamesmanship. So uh, this author did quite a few books for Penguin in the end. Um, this was the very first one. I've got a little box set of uh, three or four of his books, which we'll get to uh, later on. Um, I've got a video planned on Penguin box sets. Nicholas Bentley did the uh, line illustration cover on that one. Here's another one from the same author, One Up and Ship. Very, very 60s sort of title, that. Mark Kane, The S-Man. Don't know much about this one. It's like just ordinary fiction. Hans Unger was the uh, cover illustrator on that one. Yeah, I went saying a bit of a slightly worn copy of that. Uh, the first of the Penguin Modern Classics we'll see today. I've got a few uh, modern classics and uh, recently been enjoying the uh, the new book of Penguin Modern Classics, which is fantastic. Uh, this one's interesting. It's got a sticker on it saying Nassau price. So uh, I guess this one's come uh, imported from Egypt. Um, I have had a couple of copies of this one and uh, I really, really like the, uh, the Penguin Modern Classics. Virgil Burnett did the illustration on that one. Next, we've got 1840, which is uh, Anthony Pohl, um, most famous for his Dance to the Music of Time series. Um, all the pals around this period were done with uh, cover artist um, Osbert Lancaster, I believe. Yep, there we are. He's got quite a distinctive style, hasn't he? And um, the Penguin editions are particularly good. That's actually one of the few I've only got one copy of. Uh, most of the polls in Penguin I've got duplicates of because I just love them that much. And they're my favorite copies to read. Amé vous Brahms, Francois Sagan. Very, very thin little volume, this. More like a chapbook, um, in effect. Very, really good. Super thin, that one. 1841. Another little crime one now. An Ellery Queen. So by this point, Penguin had started publishing Ellery Queen, and um, they were going down pretty well, to be honest. So this is the Egyptian cross mystery. And I really, really love Penguin crime from this period. It's just super fantastic. Really, really great. The Simonons, these Dashiell Hammets later on are brilliant. Yeah, 1962 still with a cover designed by Romick Marber. Great, great designer. I recently had a, a dedicated website launched to celebrate his work, which I have done a little video on. Very, very good, uh, good website indeed. Anthony Carson, a rose by any other name. And a Quinton Blake cover. Recognize it now, now that I've read it. You can see the style. Still going today, of course. Fantastic. Oh, this is a fantastic little biography um, by Margaret Lane. This was um, published many years after the original came out, but I believe it was, it had a couple of revisions. And uh, this is the, basically the Beatrix Potter story. It's one of the best biographies. It's just superb. And if you're at all interested in uh, how those um, fantastic Beatrix Potter books came about, this is the, uh, the book to read. As you can see, it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it doesn't go for a fortune. You pick the Penguin edition up for probably three, four pounds, that one there. Well, well worth it. It's a great book. Now we're gonna see quite a bit of Somerset Maugham um, this time round because Penguin were uh, publishing a lot of his catalog for the first time and they made quite a big deal about it, similar to how they did later on with Hemingway and a few other authors, Aldous Huxley. Um, so they all have a very similar cover design. Yeah, Herman Zapf uh, did this cover and he did quite a bit. Um, that, that illustration turns up as well quite a lot. Portrait drawing by Graham Sutherland. So yeah, we'll see quite a bit of Somerset Maugham. Not an author I've read a lot of. 
Here's a nice synonym, but not in the uh, crime library. It's in uh, the, the, the fiction. Striptease. Now, I am, I have had a lot of requests to do uh, uh, Georges Simenon in vintage paperback. And uh, that's most definitely on the way. There he is. Rummick Marlborough cover again. Um, so that particular video on Simenon is on its way. It's just, it's a very, very big subject. And I honestly want to do it justice. It's probably an hour long video. And um, as well as all the books he had published by um, Penguin, there's, a, you know, he had smatterings of books published by lots of other publishers in the UK. And I've got bits and pieces. And I'd just like to fill in just a few more gaps and then I'll be ready to film that one. Here's another one. The Little Man from Archangel. Another Simonon, I believe a Romick Marber again. Doesn't actually get a credit that time, but I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, he gets it on the back. There you go. Unlike the other designers, you had to go hunting for it. Romick's work gets uh, celebrated on the back, almost like the author. <laughs> a famous Charles, Oscar Wilde. This is Famous Trials number seven. These were a really popular series, this. And I mean, I know true crime as a, as a genre is, um, you know, it's still a thing. You know, people enjoy reading true crime books. It does seem to have been more popular historically. Um, Albert Camus, Exile in the Kingdom, not one of his that I've read. Uh, six short stories. Paul Hogarth, he was a a penguin store, wasn't he, in the world of illustration? And in fact, yeah, he's got his uh, signature just on the bottom there. Very nice. Photograph cover here, Term of Trial, James Barlow. Um, yeah, so this was the film adaption, starring Sir, Sir Lawrence Olivier. Simone Signore and introducing Sarah Miles. That's uh, still from the uh, from the movie. I recognise Laurence Olivier in there now. So a film tie-in. Here's a nice crime one. Earl Stanley Gardner, the horse there. Two clues. Another one by Ron McMarber. He's got that distinctive style, isn't he? They're so fantastic. I'd love better copies of his books um, that he designed, but you know, he did an awful lot of them and trying to find these in mint is, is tricky, particularly the crime ones. So here's a little run of um, uh, four Somerset Morns, W Somerset Morns, and this is his collected short stories, which Penguin sort of published simultaneously. So this is 1871 for volume one. We've got uh, 1872 for volume two. That's volume three. Got the Ashenden stories, which was uh, an early Pam book. And then volume four, 1874. Big, big thick books, these, as you can see. Go then to 1875, the very next one. Lovely penguin sci fi cover, Olaf Stapledon. This was obviously an early Pelican many years ago when it was first published in uh, by Penguin. This one, cover designed by Jeffrey Martin. That's a lovely one, isn't it? That really is nice. That and uh, we are now into 1963. Yeah, first published in 1930, published in Pelican 1937 reprinted into Penguin Books for the first time in this edition in 1963. Very, very cool. Oh, one of my all-time favourite authors, George Orwell. Um, Clergyman's Daughter, not perhaps one of his uh, most well-known ones, but even so, just a great, great author. I, uh, I love Orwell to death. Fantastic stuff. Another modern classic. This one, um, I had a bit of a job because I was trying to pick, pick up all the Hemingways, which I've, I did in the end. Uh, there was just one I'm, I can't find. It was published only in America. Um, 
but this one was also quite tough to track down. It was published as a, as a first edition, as a Penguin Modern Classic, uh, Snows of Kilimanjaro. Yeah, quite, quite scarce, that one, a nice uh, Modern Classic to boot. Anthony Pohl at Lady Molly's. This is part of the Dance to the Music of Time series. It's an Osbert Lancaster cover again. It's just superb. Just love these so much. It's a great one. Nathaniel West, Day of the Locust. Malcolm M. Carter did the uh, cover design on that. Quite an interesting one. Sort of hand in, in face there. Next to Bonafide Crime Classic, you could say, the Maltese Falcon, Dashiell Hammett. Now, prior to this, uh, Pam had this one, uh, the rights to publish this, and then it became a, a, this really striking Pan Crime title. Who was the designer of this? Hopefully it says. Oh, it's another Ron McMarber. Shouldn't be surprised, it's so good. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah, very much uh, a classic of the genre. The Maltese Falcon. A Durrell. He did uh, quite a few for Penguin, of course, and this is uh, one of the sort of the mid, his mid period encounters with animals. Very much like Gerald Durrell as well. It's great stuff. Great writer. As is this one, I mean, what a run of, of authors we've got here. King uh, Graham Greene now, Confidential Agent, another one of his classics. I think this is um, amongst my favourite period for Graham Greene, a Paul Hogarth cover and a painting, and he did quite a few for Graham Greene. They gave him the treatment. He was that sort of literary author that Penguin wanted in their list at all costs. Here's uh, another one of his perhaps most famous ones, The Ministry of Fear. Great book, this one, absolutely fantastic. I actually thought I had a slightly better copy of that one, so I'm gonna look for it, um, look for an update. Paul Hogarth again, very nice indeed. Stambol Train, beautiful copy of this one. I'm not sure if this is the one I got recently. Yeah, this is one I got uh, fairly recently and it had a, a little review slip inside, which is quite nice. Original published 28th of March, 1963. And this was just a little review slip which came with that particular book. It's a beauty, isn't it? Nice little addition to my Graham Greene collection. He's another author that once I've got them all, and I've got all the pans and just missing a handful of the penguins, um, I shall be doing a dedicated video on. Um, look out for that one next year. W.H. Canaway, Sammy Going South. Looks like a gangster sort of novel, doesn't it? Adrian Bailey. Yeah, not sure what's going on there. I don't know if this guy looks like he's looking in Africa or somewhere like that, but interesting. Another little crime title now, Adventures of Ellery Queen. This is number 1908. Another interesting uh, cover there with the eyes going all over the place. Shall we guess the designer? Ron McMarber again. <laughs> That's fantastic, isn't it? This is a famous one by Muriel Spark, The Ballad of Peckham Rye. Very nice, you see this one all the time. It's uh, Terence Greer did the uh, slightly macabre jacket. I don't think that would work today, do you? But I guess it's of the, of the period. Nurse on the District, Joanna Jones. Bit of a light humour by the looks of it. Kenneth Mahout did the uh, cover illustration. Don't know much about that one. Aubrey Menon, The Fig Tree. There she is holding a fig. Um, 
Charles Mosley did the uh, cover illustration. I guess it was really adding an extra bit of work for the uh, the Penguin team, wasn't it? Having to have every book with a, with a front cover rather than the typographical covers. A traveling woman, John Wayne. Adrian Bailey again did that cover. Very interesting. I like that. That's a, that to me is a bit more interesting because there's there's quite a bit going on there to have a look at. And uh, nice T H White now, a Penguin Modern Classic, Goshawk. A great jacket that one is, isn't it? Wow. This is. Uh, Real nice one, yeah. Very, very nice indeed. Another good one. So this was uh, published around the time Penguin were reprinting the Hemingway list with some new jackets. A portrait of Hemingway, Lillian Ross. It's basically an expanded like magazine interview with him. Uh, she spent some time with him. So you, as you can see, you could read that in half an hour probably, couldn't you? Not a great deal to it, but worth it all the same and it was just like a little companion when they uh, republished all the uh, Hemingway books. Faulkner, another author to get lots of the penguin treatment as I lay dying. Another great 60s sort of cover isn't it? Andre Francois did the uh, illustration for that one. Very nice. A Paul Gallico, Genie. Never really got into this author, to be honest. It didn't really appeal to me, but I know there's definitely got his fans out there. Covered by David Gentleman. There's a famous name, isn't there? Lovely. This is uh, 1945 now. Another Gallico, Love of Seven Dolls. Quite a thin one by him. Another David Gentleman illustration on the front. C.P. Snow, still quite a, a red author these days. Death Under Sail, it's one of his crime ones. This is interesting because in the 1953, they have put a little C um, in front of it, denoting crime, I would guess. It's the first time we've seen that. Ursula Norbell did the uh, cover illustration there. It's a nice one, isn't it? Very, very 60s with the gun like that. It's lovely. Live now, pay later. Jack Trevor story. It's another movie tie-in starring Ian Hendry, June Ritchie, John Grigson and Liz Fraser. Can't say I've ever read that one. Martin Bassett designed that cover. Very nice. Hammersmith Maggot, William Moore. I think I've had this one a little while. Another great 60s crime title. I mean, look at it, it's just stonking, isn't it? Such, such great design. Yes, yeah, a Romick Marlborough one again. And. Uh, why are we looking date-wise on these? Yeah, we're into 1963 now. Very nice. Henry Slizar, The Grey Flannel Shroud. It's again a very interesting cover. It's got the initials AG on the front. So who does that stand for? Well, oh, cover designed by Martin Bassett. So I'm guessing AG must be part of the story somehow. Yeah, quite interesting. They could be the subject of a book all on their own, couldn't they? The Penguin Crime book, I think, has uh, got to be on the agenda. Sard Harker, John Macefield. It's funny, you just don't think of Penguin as a crime publisher today. Cover drawn by Charles Raymond, but back in the day, boy, oh boy, did they uh, publish some fantastic crime books. J.I.M. Stewart, A Use of Riches. Very nice jacket, that one. 
Is it going to give us the illustrator? Ah, Robin Jacks again. Same chap who did the C.S. Foresters. 1962 then is Geoffrey Household. Watcher in the Shadows. Very nice uh, copy of that one. Uh, color, cover illustration by Charles Raymond. Very nice. Now we've got two copies of this one. Um, I keep a copy to read as well. It's uh, more Penguin science fiction. This is Penguin 1963 and published in 1963. So, uh, and it's uh, yet another sci-fi anthology. Um, Oldest did three volumes of these and um, they were all put together into an omnibus later on. So they're still actually in print today, the Penguin science fiction omnibus, which is all three books into one. Um, but they were super popular in their day. Afternoon Men, Anthony Paul again. Great stuff. Great, great author. Penguin were publishing all of them at this time. It's a Osbert Lancaster front cover. Colin Watson, Bump in the Night. Very nice. 1963. A.C. Silliman. I don't think we've seen that name before, have we? A.C. Silliman did that cover. Really distinctive. I mean, imagine a big pile of those in the shop. Shame my copy's a little bit grubby, but yeah, very, very nice. These crime books are just something else, aren't they? John Stroud, On the Loose. A distinctive sort of fiction title. Brian Keogh, yeah, we've seen his name a few times today, was the designer. My friend Judas, Andrew Sinclair. And that one's actually signed on the front by Paul Hogarth. He did do a lot for Penguin around this period. Daughters of Mulberry, Roger Longridge, nice uh, horses there. Racing novel here. Milton Glazer was the uh, the cover designer then. You see his signature on the bottom. Lovely copy of that one as well. Very nice. I guess uh, Dick Francis was riding high around this time. And books on the horse racing were of interest. Um, another Hemingway, and once again one which was quite tough to find. Um, first published as a Penguin modern classic, The Short Happy Life of Francis McComber, and other stories. As you see, my copy's not great. I had to resort to uh, quite a lowish grade one off, um, off eBay, I think, in the end. But for the sake of completion, I wanted to have them all. But that's one I wouldn't mind like getting a better copy of. Frederick Prusich, A Ballad of Love. A nice, beautiful copy of this one. I think this is one I got fairly re recently, actually. It doesn't mention the cover artist at all. Ah, it's a lithograph, that's why. The cover shows a lithograph. A Chapidure by Vertiz. So it uh, wasn't specifically designed for this book. 1985, The Slide Area, Scenes of Hollywood Life, Gavin Lambert. Look at Hollywood. Cover illustration by Pushpin Studios. So we've seen historically, and in the future, we will see a few by that particular sort of studio. One of my favorite authors of all time, John Wyndham. One of my favourite books after Criffids and Crack and Wakes. This is my third favourite Wyndham, The Trouble with Lycan. Um, uh, basically, a scientist discovers by accident, almost like the discovery of penicillin, um, like a, an elixir which basically stops people to age. Um, and it's what happens in the aftermath of that. <laughs> Nothing good. Uh, covered by John Griffiths. Uh, well worth a try, that one, if you've not read any Wyndham. But don't fancy, like, you know, Man-eating plants, 
Tri Trouble Lycan, it's a, it's a good alternative. Gulk Richard G. Stern. Stedman looks like an early Ralph Stedman. We've not seen him today, have we? Yeah, look at that, Ralph Stedman. Incredibly distinctive style. And there it is. Not an artist I particularly enjoy. Uh, his his figures and characters are quite nightmarish, aren't they? But even so, that's nice to uh, nice to see. Maybe it fits the book. 1990, settled out of court, Henry Cecil. He did a lot of these like law um, law based titles. Not really my cup of tea. Kenneth Mahout, but you know, part of the Penguin story. Another one here, Daughter's In-Law, another one by Cecil. Same sort of thing, the very next number, 1991. Alibi for a Judge, same thing, 1992. It's all published. Uh, this is uh, this is a favourite of mine, a Contiki expedition. Um, it's not, I don't think, as good as Aku Aku, which is where Thor Heyerdahl goes to explore Easter Island, but this is still very, very good. And this was the first sort of Penguin edition of it. And I think Penguin did did him really proud with these books. And they were huge, huge sellers right up until the late 1970s. There we are. Fantastic stuff. Big fan of uh, Thor, Howard 1998, Frederick Raphael, The Limits of Love. What a period this has been, hasn't it? In uh, Penguin history, 1963 still. Cover drawing by Malcolm Carter. That one there. Another Penguin sci-fi now. Saying, proudly saying Penguin science fiction along the top. Sirius, Olaf Stapledon. Very nice. And then Penguin Books number 2000, which was obviously a bit of a milestone. If you remember, number 1000 went to one of our submarines, which was uh, designed by the uh, person who first ever created the uh, Penguin logo. Um, but number 2000 was this one, the New English Bible, the New Testament. And that was... Uh, I guess a very appropriate book to have as the 2000th ever Penguin, published in conjunction with OUP, Oxford University Press, and Cambridge University Press, and published in, uh, by Penguin in 1964. Very, very nice. So as I think you'll agree, that is an absolutely fantastic selection of vintage Penguin books today. Well, I think you'll agree that's an absolutely fantastic little run of vintage Penguin books from uh, 62 to the very start of 1964. Some fantastic authors and titles in that particular selection. So I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Do please hit that subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage Penguin content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.